Hi there, this is Desiru Almeida from Vizo Real Estate Development Agency. Uh, warm welcome to all you viewers today. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a channel meant for helping and educating investors out there in understanding the real estate market of Goa. And as such, uh, in the next coming uh, couple of videos, we'll be trying to give you a much broad perspective of the things you need to know and consider before you invest your hard and money into the state. So without much delay, let's begin today's video. The topic under discussion today would be having a basic understanding of uh, the zoning and classification of uh, properties in Goa. Before I continue with this respective topic, I would like to shed some light on the fact that if you're a person who is uh, well acquainted or is well aware of how real estate function and basically performs in the rest of the state, that does not necessarily mean that it would be the same in Goa. And this difference arises due to the fact that Goa is uh, one of the states uh, which was ruled by the Portuguese and as such, this Portuguese era has had deep impacts on our, not only on our heritage and our culture over here, but as well as on our legal functioning. We have come across endless clients who have made certain assumptions about uh, the operation of a real estate over here, due to, given that they are developers or investors in another state, and this has really backfired for them. So as such, uh, please be aware of exactly what you're getting yourself into, know, do your homework very well, and only then enter the real estate market of Goa. Uh, so let's begin with our topic under discussion today. Simple properties in Goa can be classified into three major classifications under which all forms of subcategories can be found. To begin with, you have your settlement land, followed by orchard land, and finally you have your agricultural land. Now, knowing exactly what these respective three classification means is basically very important because each of them spells out whether or not you will be able to carry out the respective intention that you have for this real estate investment. So always know the deep depths of these respective classification and only then make the consideration. Now let's get into uh, in-depth knowledge of each of these classification. Now, the first one, settlement land. A property bearing such form of status basically implies that it has been permitted by the TCP and the government for any form of developmental activity. This form of land is most sought after as I think it already implies you can construct any form of permanent structures on top of it, any form of development. Let me also remind you the fact that this is the only classification of land that allows you to develop any form or build any form of permanent structures on top of it. So as an investor who wants to get into the lines or if you have the intention of developing your respective real estate property into the buildings, flats, villas, whatever the case may be, this is the property, this is the type of classification that your property that you're interested in should have. Also, you need to ensure that your entire property bears this classification of settlement because many a times part property settlement, part is orchard, part is forest. Of course, certain, conver certain classifications can be converted into settlement, however, some cannot. So you have to be very careful while purchasing your property and you need to ensure on uh, your regional plan that your entire property has been declared as a respective settlement plot if it is being claimed by the respective seller or their area. Coming to the second one, Orchard Land. Any form of property which bears such form of classification has been deemed suitable for the purpose of cultivation of trees, specifically fruit-bearing trees. Uh, if you've noticed how Goa is, uh, Goa has a larger coverage of, uh, an, of the greenery. And as such, you notice that a larger portion of properties comes under this respective classification. Now, when a property bears such classification or a zoning status, it, uh, it, the government does not allow any form of permanent structure to be developed on such type of properties. However, the good thing is that orchard land can be converted to settlement land, that is, non-development land can be converted to a type of a property on which you can develop. Now, this process of conversion is governed, of course, uh, by the respective uh, land record and the TCP departments. And it can be a slightly time-consuming and tedious process. I will be making another video to explain how this process of conversion works. But this process of conversion, of converting a non-development land to a development one, is the process which gives uh, rise to the term uh, called sanat, which basically means that now this respective property was an orchard land and now it has been converted to a status of uh, uh, to a status which permits a respective person to develop on such a property. Now the terminology of sanat does not arise in case of settlement land because you already permitted 
to develop this type this type of respective property sanad only arises in the case where a respective property was not was a non developmental land and has now been made a development land so all these things have to be considered when you are looking for when you are looking at a property which bears the status of an orchard land third one agricultural land in simple any property or land bearing such form of zoning status is been deemed that it can only be used for the purpose of agricultural activities now it should also be considered the fact that such properties cannot be converted through the same process that that allows a property to be made into a developmental property agricultural land is only suitable and meant for agricultural activities now however in multiple cases there have been scenarios where agricultural land or non developmental land has been converted to development land but i can assure you this wasn't this, this wasn't the legal process i also refrain from trying to use influence and money to get this this type of jobs done because by mistake if the local community in the area objects to such projects you will end up sitting with a property which you cannot touch or do anything with so always refrain from violating the respective legal or uh, legal uh, aspects of our goa rules and also try to respect the ecosystem of goa and this will really help you and your business and your respective intention of real estate in goa so this was my best attempt to help you guys out there understand what and how the classification of properties functions in goa and i look forward to giving you more and more details and a deeper understanding with the upcoming videos We are real estate developers based here in Goa. We conduct, uh, we execute development uh, and multiple real estate based activities to help uh, people out there and having a dream of owning a piece of land in Goa turn into reality. So please feel free to follow us on our social media platforms as well as supporting us in this respective uh, strive to help others out there in this industry. and please feel free to like and share our respective content with uh, your fellow members family members relatives and associate thank you so much and i look forward to getting back to you